Hi loves, welcome back to my channel. Um, I hope you're all alright. This is my 33 week vlog. Um, it is crazy, where is time going? How are my 33 weeks? It doesn't seem two minutes since I uploaded my test day video. Like that is just crazy to me. I actually watched that was it last night or maybe the night before? I was do just doing some updates to my channel, like my header and things like that. Um, and it came up and I just watched it again and I got all the feels and it is so weird. And it still hasn't sunk in all this, you know, time later. Um, that I'm actually going to have a baby soon. But, you know, here we are. Today's exciting. I'm having an exciting day. So if you follow me on Instagram uh, and if you watched last week's vlog, you'll know that I ordered a great big giraffe to go in the nursery. I say it's great and big, it's a metre tall, which is quite big, I would say, for a toy. Um, but it's to go in the nursery, I don't know where yet, I am yet to decide on a location, but it's been delivered and I'm really excited. Um, when I ordered it, I was like, cool, delivery's a bit expensive, didn't even check it, I'd done it for next day delivery. So it came today and I'm really, really excited to get it out. I've got it here next to me, um, which is super, super exciting. I am feeling good this week. I have had some symptoms uh, rise their head again. I now seem to like gag every time I brush my teeth. I'm like a little bit sick. But other than that, things really are okay. I am getting tired now. Like I am every night feeling knackered by like seven o'clock and I'm just so ready for bed and I'm feeling the need for afternoon naps but unfortunately I'm working until 37 weeks which makes it very very hard to have afternoon naps. Obviously I updated you on my gap scan last week so last night um, we actually did uh, another big section of our hypnobirthing course. We usually do an hour a week but we'd actually missed the last two weeks um, for whatever reason I can't even remember why but we missed the last two weeks and therefore we did like a big chunk of it last night and we got through, I think it was all of section four, um, which is all about like your different options when going into labour and different things that they will offer you in the lead up to labour. So things like a sweep, your induction, caesareans, um, what happens when babies breach, all different things like that. So it came at a really good time because obviously in my last uh, vlog I did tell you that baby was breach. Now we have got plenty of time for baby to turn. I have another scan at 36 weeks where if baby is still breached they will then go over my options with me but I also have a, have a scan on my due date so if I'm honest I mean I don't know 100% and I don't think I'm asking for advice on this at this stage I don't know but I don't think I don't think I am at the minute I think I want to talk to my midwife a little bit more when I see her next week but if baby is still breached at my 36 week appointment I don't think I want to make any decisions about that until my scan on my due date and if on my due date baby is still breached then have a conversation about it. I'm quite open to having conversations about it at 36 weeks, but I absolutely don't think I want to be making any decisions four weeks before baby is due, because I think they still have time. They still have time to turn, and obviously, yes, they're bigger, so it's perhaps a bit less likely, but I feel like that's the decision I've made. Like, I don't want to feel like... I'm being pressured into making any kind of decision. I need to look into it a little bit more, but I've been doing kind of some exercises, things like that to try and get baby to turn. So when I'm working now, I work on my exercise ball, so like my birthing ball. So I'm kind of sat on that all day. And then there's a website that my hypnobirthing course recommended called spinning babies and one of their tips is that you kind of put your knees on the sofa and your hands on the floor so that your you know gravity like is encouraging baby to turn things like that but it was just kind of going through lots of different options last night and what your what different scenarios are when you would be offered certain things when it's perhaps sensible to take up those offers when it's perhaps not what the risks are and I found it really really beneficial to be honest I found it really useful especially in terms of like cesareans I will do a video I think about my birth plan like specifically about my birth plan I'm very aware that things don't always go right and that things can go horribly wrong I you know years and years ago when my sister was born I nearly lost my mum because things go horribly wrong during birth. I'm very, very aware of how these things go and what different outcomes are. And I, that's why I've always said that I have birth preferences over a birth plan. And I feel like I'm very prepared for the likelihood, not the likelihood, but I think I am aware of and somewhat prepared for an unplanned cesarean where something happens, 
you know, uh, you know, when you're in labour, the decision is made that it is probably safest to have a cesarean. Quite open to that. I'm quite aware of the fact that that is a possibility and that is okay. I think something that I am perhaps less open to is anything planned and therefore knowing what date my baby is going to come. I feel like I, I, I don't want it to come to that and if I can help it then I don't want anything planned. And that isn't anything towards anybody who decides that that is for them. Obviously whatever you do, you do is right for you. It may be that that is right for us but at the moment I don't feel like I want to go down that route unless I have to. For me I think I would like to really focus on turning baby before we start exploring anything else but I have plenty of time yet. It's just something that's really on my mind at the moment because I know how soon you know those those conversations going to start being had and I, I feel like I need to think about it, I need to verbalise it, I need to kind of understand it myself and for me that means talking about it. So yeah we will see but that's kind of where I'm at at the moment but I feel like the hypnobirthing course last night came at a really good time because I think I'd been thinking about it an awful lot and whilst I know that we still have so much time for baby to turn, you know my due date is still seven weeks away it's just something that I've been thinking about and so that's why I've included it in the vlog. Um, anyway, more exciting stuff. Let's talk about shopping. So like I say, I bought the giraffe and the giraffe got delivered today. So the giraffe has come in this great big box, which we're going to open in a minute. It is light as a feather. <laughs> um, and then also last night, I realised last night I haven't done anything <laughs> for weeks other than like the nursery. I haven't any kind of prep and things that I should be doing, like my birth plan, um, like my hospital bag, like, you know, figuring out how to use the car seat and all the rest of it. I've done none of that. I don't know why. I feel like I've just completely taken my foot off the pedal. So my actual hospital bag, I was sent by a really lovely lady and I will share her Instagram down below. But I was sent a hospital bag. Again, I will do a specific video on what I'm packing in my hospital bag. But I haven't actually done anything for the hospital. A lot of people said to me about getting a nighty and making sure that I have a night dress for when I'm in a hospital. Just having one or two and particularly because if you do end up having an unplanned cesarean you might not want anything on your waistband. So I decided to have a look for like a button down night dress um, and Boohoo had some really good ones. They had like multi-pack, they have like just single ones or maternity and I just thought you know what I will get one of those and then um I've got it so I'm gonna get a couple more I've bought one at the minute just so I can have a look at the sizing make sure I like it before I then buy any more and then I also ordered myself a coming home outfit <laughs> which is one of the saddest things I've ever done I never ever ever thought I would buy myself a coming home from hospital outfit but I just felt like I didn't want to come home feeling like a bag of poo and I'm probably going to I'm sure I'm going to be on cloud nine but I will have just birthed a baby and I'm under no illusions that I am not going to be skipping and dancing out of there like Mary Poppins but I have I have two pairs of I've got four pairs, sorry, of maternity leggings. Some I've kind of got on now and they're more like joggers and they've got pockets and what have you. Then I have three other pairs, but they're all like that kind of sporty legging material. And two of them I find, because I've put on a bit of weight, I feel like my bum's got a bit big for them. And they do feel a little bit tighter. They're lovely and they are such a nice fit, but I just feel like they might be a little bit tight for when I come out of hospital and I just want comfort. And the other ones are like a red wine colour. They're really, really lovely. They are so comfy, but they also go with very little. And I just thought, I just want something big, oversized, but I want to feel nice because I have no doubt that when we get home, parents or somebody is gonna come round and all the rest of it. And I just decided, if I'm really honest, I don't even think I need to sit here and justify myself. I decided I wanted to buy a coming home outfit. So I did. So I got some leggings and an oversized sh shirt as well, which I love. I love an oversized shirt. I love a checkered shirt. So for me, I was like, well, that will see me through the whole of autumn and the rest of my life. I'm going to stop waffling on and we're going to open the boxes now. Right, let's get in this big H&M box. If I can, surely the lid just comes off. Ah, it does. Oh, look. Look. Oh, it smells funny. I think it's just the plastic. It's coming. This poor giraffe. Look at it. Look at that giraffe. That is a squashed giraffe if I've ever seen one. But yeah, let's get... Let's get her out. What should we call her? I feel like everybody calls their giraffe Sophie because of the teething toy. So this one can't be Sophie too. Oh, look at you. Oh, look at you. You're lovely. You're so soft. <gasps> You're so pretty. <gasps> oh, I like this a lot. Oh, this was a good purchase, Amber. Well done. 
very 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 well done how long do we think it's going to be before bruce tries to claim this giraffe hold on let me get it out all its packaging so this is our giraffe say hello what should we call the giraffe give me an idea put some ideas in the comments what should we call this giraffe sophie is ruled out but this is wicked this is a really good giraffe i it is small well i say it's small it's not tiny at all it is literally a meter tall which is what they said um but i don't think it's big enough to go next to the cot so maybe it can look over the changing table that might be a good idea well we're gonna find a home for the giraffe but you're lovely and you're very soft and you're very very pretty and look at his little eyelashes this is not bad at all i'm gonna link this for you because i think everybody needs this in their nursery don't they yes they do yes they do and for 25 pounds well i actually paid 21 for you but for £25, I don't think that's bad at all. Do you? No, I didn't think so. Okay, so I will show you my Boohoo buys. Maybe, should I try them on? No, I'm not going to try them on right now. What I got was, if I can actually ever get into this bag. Right, so here is the 90. So it is very much exactly what it says on the tin. So as you can see, it is just a button-down, knee-length, 90 might not be knee length for everyone but it's knee length for me but i just thought that was perfect for while i was in hospital um i wanted to get a button down one because um as i said my intention is to breastfeed and i just thought it would be easier to have one that i could just unbutton to try and get that established uh and then once i'm home from hospital as well providing they're obviously <laughs> you know ones that aren't covered in blood and going in the bin everybody knows what black leggings look like so i'm not going to bother getting them out but i literally just got some plain black leggings and then finally so this is the oversized shirt that i got so it's black beige with a tiny hint of green so i love that i love that a lot i got it in they only had like three sizes available and one of them was like a size up for me, I say a size up, it's the size of my bum, but not the size of the rest of my body. Oh, it's a really nice material. It's really, really thick, actually. I might just shove this on. I wouldn't usually wear it done up, I don't think, but I think actually, let's have a look. Oh, this is a, this is a lovely material. E.T. Fon Hom. Um, yeah. So this is a really nice, really lovely material. If I just get on my knees, I can't be bothered getting up. But yeah, so this is quite large. It comes down just below my bum. If I stand up, you can see how low it is. So yeah, I feel like this is definitely the kind of vibe I was after. Um, and I just, yeah, I wouldn't wear it totally done up. Probably wear it with a black vest underneath and either open or down to about here. Nice necklace. Maybe not when I'm coming home from hospital. But yeah, I really, really like this. I think it's lovely. Um, I really, really like that pattern. So I will link this as well. But yeah, I just wanted something big and oversized that I could live in throughout the autumn um, with the baby. And yeah, I feel like this is perfect. So I'm really, really happy with this. It was in the sale. I think it was in the sale. Was it in the sale? I can't actually remember how much money I paid for it at all, but I will link it. Um, and yeah, I really liked it. So anyway, I'm happy with that. I'm going to find a home for the giraffe. And yeah, that's me. I've got a pile of ironing to do. So I'm going to crack on and do that before Marco gets home from work. And then put dinner in the oven. I'm having chicken Kievs tonight. My favourite freezer food. Bloody love a chicken Kiev. Prefer a chicken Kiev with garlic. And Marco did get ham and cheese ones. But I'll let him off because whenever we have Kievs, we have the garlic ones. What do you prefer, ham and cheese or garlic? Let me know. Hello. I've been quiet. So I think... Literally, I don't think I've recorded since Thursday. So it is now, what day is it today? I'm just gonna pop you down. God, I'm, look at all that dog hair that is covered. I'm absolutely covered in the stuff. So yeah, it's currently Sunday. We've just had like a really busy weekend and I've just kind of not had, yeah, I've just, to be honest, I just completely forgot to record. But I think yesterday I did a all day antenatal course. I did it through Baby Academy. It was a gifted course and it was brilliant. It was really, really good. It was one, uh, I've done a few free courses with them and I really, really loved them. And I tagged them kind of on Instagram and had said about the fact that I was really enjoying their courses and I thought they were really, really beneficial. So yeah, they messaged me and asked if I wanted to do the all day one, which we were going to sign up to anyway. But I think once you've done a few of their free ones, you tend to get bit of a discount code with it anyway but it was really good so Marco was at work so I did it by myself yesterday it was half nine till half four and it literally covered everything from like labor to preparing for birth like what to expect pain options kind of pain options like 
uh, pain relief options, different interventions, but like when going through birth, all things like that. Breastfeeding, baby first aid, there was so, so much included. Um, and we've also got the recording sent to us. It's really bothering me how covered in dog hair I am. I'm really sorry, me and Bruce have just been having a cuddle. Yeah, there was so, so much that was included. So it was really, really good. Definitely think it was worth it. But yeah, so they sent us the recording. So Marco is gonna be able to watch it and he's gonna do that in his own time. He's gonna do like a couple of hours at a time. Um, you get the slides with it, you get some resources too. So really, really good, really recommend. I will link the Baby Academy down below because like I say, I have done their breastfeeding, their free breastfeeding course and their free baby care course and they've been brilliant. So I really, really do recommend that you have a look at them. Then last night we actually went for a barbecue at my mum's house. So we were there kind of till really late last night. Came home, I had the best night's sleep I have had in so, so long. Um, we got home at about half 11, I think. And then I didn't actually get into bed until about half 12. And then I slept through till half eight today, which was just lovely. I don't remember the last time I had like an eight hour sleep. So that was really, really nice. And then today we went for, a, we took Bruce this morning. We went for a nice walk down the like embankment, down the river, then stopped and went and had lunch. Went to see Marco's dad for a bit. And then my sister came over this afternoon. So it's been like really, really full on. I've just come up to the nursery. This week I am gonna get a move on so i have quite a busy week to be honest i'm working all week tomorrow night i'm going to see my friend tuesday i have a chiropractor appointment which i am so excited for i cannot tell you honestly my chiropractor is called john and when i tell you i have woken up every day for the last three weeks thinking of john i'm not lying um so i can't wait to see him and then wednesday marco and i do our hypnobirthing and then thursday i'm doing something else thursday i'm back at acronatal yoga so it's a busy week for me but i am going to start doing my hospital bag this week and i'm also going to put up the next to me crib like i'm going to stop putting it off we'll be 34 weeks at the end of this week and i just feel like I've met too many people over the last few weeks that have said to me, oh, with my first, uh, my first was born at 35 weeks, or my first was born at 37 weeks. There's a lady I work with, and she's had three kids, and she was like, my first one came at 35, the next one came at 37, and the one after that came at 38. And I was like, hmm, okay, maybe it's best that I am just prepared. Only like 15% of babies are born before their due date, so I really don't think that baby's gonna spontaneously arrive, but you just never know, do you? So I'm definitely gonna get prepared, but I just think I keep putting things off, so now it's the time to do it and the hospital bag is one that I really do want to start and there's still a few bits I need to buy for it but I just thought I'd kind of go over the list with you I've asked on Instagram a couple of times like what I should include and I always get inundated with answers but maybe sorry I thought somebody just walked into my house I got a bit confused but yeah so maybe you can give me some ideas too if there's anything on that list that I've not got also just wanted to show you this so this is I actually I did I post it on Instagram I took a photo of it anyway and sent it to Marco because when I was in Tesco the other day, I saw this really, really adorable little, like, it's like a knitted jumpsuit um, and it is so jumpsuit, like dungarees and it is so autumnal and lovely that I saw this, sent it to Marco and I was like, oh my God, I need it. I didn't buy it for whatever reason, I just didn't. I didn't buy anything when I was there. What I actually went for was to find some like long sleeve baby grows and like a pack of like five or six or whatever. They didn't have any in Tesco, but I found this and absolutely loved it. So anyway, I got home and I said to Marco, I've not stopped thinking about this little outfit. And I'd sent him a picture because like I say, I was like, oh my God, it's got little acorns on it and everything. And then one of our very good friends was in to get her hair done yesterday and she walked into the salon and she was like, oh, I was in Tesco and I saw this and she's bought with it. So I feel like I've got really good taste because I didn't tell her about it and she bought with it. So that's great. So I'm really, really excited about that. So it needs washing, but I'm gonna hang it up um, in the wardrobe while I'm up here. And then like I say, my sister came today. So above the wardrobe, I'll show you in a mo, but my sister bought us right at the beginning of the, oops, I just knocked over the giraffe. Um, right at the beginning of the pregnancy, my sister put together like a, just like a box of things for the baby. Um, and it came in this really, really gorgeous box from the works and it was a very hungry caterpillar. Um, so I'll show you it because I don't actually know what to put in it. So let me just set the camera up, hold on. So this is the box. Um, so it's really quite deep. It is like a massive box, but this one's obviously The Very hung Hungry Caterpillar, which was one of mine and my sister's favorite books when we were a kid. Well, kids even, we weren't a joint child, but yeah, so it's absolutely massive. Um, so we were like, this will be brilliant for storage. So at the minute, I just keep it on top of the wardrobe. But she told me today that she's got us some other ones. So we have a Gruffalo one coming, a 
Peter Rabbit one and a fourth one that I can't remember. But these are absolutely amazing and I'm pretty sure they're only about £5 from the works. So again, I will try and find them and link them. If they are a bit more than £5, and I'm sorry I got that wrong. But I just think they're great and they're such good quality too. So these will be brilliant. So like I say, I don't know what I'm going to store in them yet. Maybe you can give me some ideas, pop some ideas in the comments. But but yeah, I love them. I think they're so, so cool. Yeah, so a lot to do this week. I just feel like I've got a lot to start getting in order and make sure that we've got everything for the baby now um, and just get the final few bits. I think we are going to put like a shelf or something up here, maybe a mirror, pictures on the wall, things like that. Just try and make it a little bit more cosy in here. I ordered some bed sheets, so they come... Monday or Tuesday maybe, I can't remember, but they come this week. But I ordered some like Serengeti Safari bed sheets from Mama Shack, which is a small business, that, again, I will link in the description box. Found them on Instagram, and a few of you messaged me like, oh my God, their stuff is amazing. And yeah, it's just, it looks really cute, and it looks really good quality. So the sheets that we got, we did actually, you might remember, because um, I think I put it on Instagram, that I did get some bed sheets from Dunelm that were covered in like giraffes, and they had like the whole safari vibe to them. They were lovely, they were 13 pounds, but what I didn't realise is that there's a difference between a cot and a cot bed. So we've got a cot bed, so this will uh, convert into a toddler bed, which means that the mattress is slightly bigger. So what I bought was one, I think it was 60 by 120, and we need 70 by 140. So they didn't fit the bed, and once you've broken the seal, you can't return them. And there's a big sticker on it saying it and all the rest of it. And so a few of you said to me about keeping hold of them because I did try to sell them and then I just thought, oh, do you know what? So yeah, a few of you said about travel cots and how they tend to fit all of them. So um, it won't fit our next to me crib because we've got the Maxi Cozy Iora and it's a slightly different shape. Like the mattress is almost like a round so you need certain sheets for it. So it won't fit that. I mean, be, you, I suppose you could, but it'd be a bit, they would be a little bit loose and I don't really... I'd rather just get, well, we've got some fitted ones for it. So yeah, so they, uh, we've decided to keep that because then we thought, well, you know, if and when we get a travel cot, um, it'll be really handy. Or if like, I don't know, they, yeah, like my mum sets anything up or yeah, we get a travel cot. It'll just be really handy. So if you gave me that idea, thank you. We did decide to go with it. Um, even though initially I was a bit like, nah, I'd just rather get my money back. So yeah, these ones were a bit more expensive and there's only one sheet that comes with it. It's an orgas, it's like an, it's an organic muslin cloth material but is a fitted bed sheet for for this so i think i paid 19 pounds i think it was reduced from 22 maybe but like i say it's a small company absolutely beautiful design um and the organic cotton all the rest of it you know it's not like mass produced or anything like that so so yeah we're really excited about that actually and i think it'll look lovely in here it'll just brighten it up give it a bit of color in the cot i'll give you a little bump date oh also actually before i forget when we were at my mum's last night, so everybody was really drunk, <laughs> apart from me, <laughs> I did not drink, I assure, um, assure you that, but everybody else was really drunk and people were obviously trying to guess what we were having, um, my mum's friend at one point came over and she said, can I touch your bump? And I said, yeah, it's fine, knock yourself out, and she said, I'll be able to tell you what you're having, and I said, okay. So she put her hands on my bump and she moved her hands around a little bit and she said, you're having a boy. I was like, okay. If you say so. If you say I'm having a boy, I'm having a boy. But then another friend said, have you done the needle and thread test? And I said, no, what's that? And we've done like, we've had a look at all the different gender theories and she said it's the same as like the wedding ring one where you put a ring on a piece of thread and you see which direction it goes and it's the same with a needle so you can do it with a needle or you can do it with a ring so like i say you put it on a piece of cotton you lay down and somebody hangs it over your belly gets it still and then yeah whatever it, the direction apparently determines what you're having so if it goes left to right so if it just swings like a pendulum um you're having a boy and if it goes round in a circle it's a girl so we did it twice last night, and both times it came back with exactly the same thing, and it came back in the biggest circle I've ever seen. So everybody was like, oh my god, you're having a girl, you're having a girl. Every, when I say everyone I know personally that is pregnant, and that's a lot, it feels like everybody is pregnant at the moment, everyone I know that has found out is having a girl, so I'm a bit like, the odds of us having a girl too, I feel like are pretty slim. I don't really know 
anymore. I have a gut feeling, but I don't know. Marco's fairly certain one way. I say he's certain, like Marco's gut feeling is pretty strong one way. But yeah, we just thought it was quite amusing. Um, and she was like, you know, I've had three kids and that was never wrong for me and all of this. I was like, okay, we will see. We will see how we get on. But yeah, it's <laughs> six and a half weeks, give or take, until we find out. So uh, we'll soon see who was wrong. Quite hard to be wrong, isn't it? It's 50-50 at the end of the day, but I thought it was quite interesting. Quick bump date for you and then I am going to go. Marco's on his way back with the McDonald's for me. Um, so yeah, so little bump date. These are <laughs> these are the boobs. This is not the bump. Um, but yeah, so here you go. So here is the old bump. I don't feel like it looks very big today. Um, it feels it, but it definitely doesn't look it as much um it probably will like when i've had the baby i'll look back this isn't maternity as you can see like you can see how stretched it is and how almost see-through it is on that basis but yeah i'm definitely starting to feel large i'm feeling very um very squashed around the rib and lung area like i feel like breathing is definitely getting harder i was sat on the sofa earlier and i was like oh i need to move i can't breathe yeah so everything is getting a little bit <laughs> A little bit harder i'm very aware of how pregnant i am i'm very much like i love being pregnant i have loved i would say 95 percent of being pregnant and i will miss it tremendously i will really miss my bump but in the same breath i think i'd be lying if i said i wasn't looking forward to getting my body back in some capacity like today when we were going we were going for our walk i was like half an hour into the walk i was like i'm i'm done like my my hips are in bits like because i could just feel the baby <laughs> I was like every time i move i feel like i could feel like a head or a bum or something depending on what position the baby's in now i thought i could feel something and i was like oh i just need to sit down now so yeah but i'm super super excited and yeah i am gonna miss miss having this bump for sure um and seeing them move and all the rest of it it's just really lovely hello uh i have just got out of my midwife appointment um i am 33 plus six i've been really really rubbish at vlogging this week um but i have started my hospital bag and i've also put up the next to me but yeah i completely forgot about my midwife appointment if i'm really really honest um I thought it was next week and I logged into work this morning and my calendar notified me and I was like oh no so yeah hence why I look like this I'm meant to be filming a vlog uh, like my Wednesday night vlog at some point today so yeah so anyway I've just been to my midwife appointment um, I saw my chiropractor last night and we thought that baby had perhaps turned because I had started getting like pains in my pelvis and it just felt like something was there the movement had been higher up he had a feel after he'd done all my adjustments and what have you and it did feel as though baby had really turned um i've been doing a lot on the spinning babies website just doing some different exercises using my exercise ball etc um making sure that i'm moving around drinking plenty of water you know all the usual spiel but anyway i've gone to see my midwife today and she is you know 90 percent sure that baby is still breech um and my movement seems the movement seems to have changed from the top to the bottom again so i think they may have flipped again in the night and are now breech so she did start discussing different options with me and has told me to think about it just in case um you know i i really like my midwife but the midwife that i saw today isn't my usual midwife um but she was lovely i couldn't fault her she was really really nice so she did kind of go over what the different options would be if baby is still breached at my scan so that i can look into it and so that i can be prepared which i really appreciated because i think there's a lot of research that i've done myself but i'm also very aware of the fact that Google can scaremonger and that you talk to different people who have different experiences of things so it was quite nice or I felt it was quite nice for her to go over that with me so at the kind of what she said is that if baby is breached at my next appointment I will be offered an ECB which is where they try and flip baby manually they give me like an injection which will almost like relax my uterus and then they try and manually move baby sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it's about 50 percent um success uh and if it doesn't work then they will then start talking to me or they will suggest a c-section delivery have a scan in two weeks yeah i have a scan at 36 weeks so i've got a scan two weeks tomorrow um and then i see my midwife the week after that she decided that my 36 week appointment could be 37 because i'm seeing the consultant um 
so yeah all is good all is good in the hood um but like i say i saw my chiropractor yesterday which was just amazing he was really impressed with the position of my pelvis um he was impressed with how quickly i could get uh up and down off the table so my stomach muscles are clearly still doing all right but yeah generally it was a really good appointment and i wasn't as kind of um I wasn't as skew whiff as I thought I was, which is great. Um, but he did do some adjustments, which were lovely. I felt like a new woman afterwards. He has told me off for how I sit at work and the fact that I have started, st well, I've stopped using my office and instead I work on the dining room table. Um, and I don't use any of the aids I've got. And I do need to move a bit more. I take Bruce every day. Um, but that's it and Marco's kind of he's been off this week so he's been doing it every day so I have literally just been finishing work and not doing a great deal other than that I'm uh, I'm sweating it's really hot again like I think we're at 28 degrees today um yeah it's currently 27 which is just horrific I'm just so ready for autumn now like I keep thinking September's next week and I'm like that's wonderful and then I look at my phone and I look at the weather app and it's like still going to be in the mid 20s and I'm like no I want the red crispy leaves now and it just to be cool um but obviously autumn doesn't want to come for me so whatever we'll remember that if autumn ever wants anything from me oh guys 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 I'm <laughs> I feel like I need to catch my breath I've just walked upstairs to start filming this and I have run out of breath that is the stage I'm at now, guys. I'm at the stage where I literally cannot breathe. So, I promised that before I finished this vlog, I would show you the next to me and show you that I had started packing my hospital bag and just kind of show you what I've done so far. Yesterday, so today is now Thursday, but yesterday, um, obviously, I'd had my midwife appointment and came on and spoke to you then. I went back. I, I literally got home, finished work... And then I just fell asleep on the sofa and that was it. And like Marco woke me up to have my dinner. And then I literally just, that was it. I was in bed. I was so, so tired yesterday. Don't know where it came from. So the next to me cot I did set up. It was really easy to set up. So I will show you it in a mo. Um, when I say I've set it up, I mean I've built it. So I've built it and I've put it in our room. I haven't attached it to our bed yet. Um, I don't really see the point. I find it quite hard to get out of bed anyway now. So I sleep with my pregnancy pillow like in the middle of the bed and I sleep on my left hand side like cuddling it. It doesn't really work for me having it behind me. Um, I just always seem to wake up like tangled in it so it just never really works. So I like having it to cuddle and it keeps me on my side. So I have to quite literally roll over 180 and then try and sit myself up and swing myself around to get out of bed. Um, I'm definitely finding it harder to, that, to do that and with the amount that I need to get up in the night to go to the loo, it just seemed like an absolute waste of time assembling it to the bed and I was just making life harder for myself. If I'm honest, the only reason we've put it up is to get Bruce used to it. I am in the process of pretty much getting everything ready now so that he has time to get used to it. One thing a lot of people said to me on Instagram um, when I've been talking about getting Bruce ready is that they found that setting up the furniture gradually was the best option because otherwise in like the space of a week you have like all this new furniture coming up and then the baby coming home as well. It's a lot for them to get used to. I think I, I understand that people that don't necessarily have pets probably think that um, some of the preparation I've been doing is a little bit over the top and are probably going to raise an eyebrow at some of the stuff I've been doing. But for me Bruce is absolutely my first baby. Like he has been um, my baby for the last five years. Uh, he is absolutely part of this family and I don't want him to feel like he's things are inevitably going to change for him um and you know in terms of the pecking order um of course the baby is going to have to start coming before bruce and so on and so forth i just want him to kind of get used to as much as possible so that it's less of a shock to him so one thing i did do when i set up the next to me was put it next to the bed and I put a teddy bear in there and one thing that we have been doing consistently pretty much the whole way through the pregnancy is playing crying sounds on our phone. I'll just put my phone in a random place and play those crying sounds. Um, I'll put it near me when I've been practicing wearing the free rider sling. I have put a teddy bear in that and my phone in there as well with the crying sounds. He's very intrigued not so much by the crying sounds but by me soothing them. So the crying sounds he has never even like raised an eyebrow at he always just continues to sleep um or continues doing what he's doing but when i had them in the sling and i was kind of like pretending almost that i was soothing this child 
he does he comes over and he is very much oh what's in there and tries to have a little sniff so it is just kind of implementing those boundaries and him understanding that that sound means that I am going to be dealing with that rather than him so one thing I did with the cot is I do occasionally kind of move it next to the bed and then put the teddy bear in there play the crying sounds I did that the other day and I kind of sat up started soothing the teddy bear um and again he did the exact same thing he wasn't bothered at all until I started soothing it um and at that point he came over as if to say oh what's going on here but as soon as you tell him no or as soon as you tell him he needs to go lay down all the rest of it um he does he's a very very well behaved boy he was just I think a bit intrigued and I think that's going to be it more than anything that he's going to be intrigued by the new smells and the new sounds um but we'll get there and I'm sure that it will be a transition um and I have no doubt that to begin with he will probably feel a little bit left out I think it is our priority to make sure that you know if I've got the baby and Marco can that Marco can you know say hello to Bruce have a little cuddle with him um the same with guests when they come in that they say hello to him and I, I just think it's really important that we kind of still make him feel loved but obviously there will be big changes that he's gonna have to get used to I will now show you the crib so this is the crib that we've gone for so we have gone for the maxi cozy iora um we had a look at this one but then we also had a look at the tutti bambini um i can't remember what it's called but it's one that tilted it was a really really similar design i really loved the color of this i loved the fact that it was that charcoal color our bedroom wall is black so it goes really well with that and then i really like like this brown leather detail on it and then you have like the wood effect rim going round it so i do really really like that it's obviously not focusing very well um it is a funny shape so it is more curved um and the mattress you have to buy certain sheets for i'm really sorry i'm out of breath again you have got to buy certain sheets for um but we didn't buy this new so actually one of marco's clients had a baby um earlier in the year she was getting rid of hers and she asked if we wanted it so we have been really lucky and this was given to us without charge so um just for transparency there i didn't pay uh well we didn't pay for it we did offer but we didn't pay for it um so yeah so uh, when you see the price i think it's about 189 new um it was really easy to put together obviously we didn't have um the manual so uh to put it together i did quite literally just watch you uh, watch youtube videos but it was really really easy so you can see here so this is you can change how high it goes so it matches your bed so that's what we've done um we've got it on the lowest setting because we do have quite a low bed um i also so this how gorgeous is this changing mat i absolutely love it but it also has like a little shelf underneath so i have quite literally just shoved in here at the minute some nappies some uh, wipes and then some nappy cream which to be honest I don't even think I'll use but is just a cheap Tesco one I think um, but yeah I just thought this was really really handy and we can put some spare sleep suits in there etc um, just anything that I may need any feeding things etc that I may well need for the night feeds um, but I really really like it it's really I think handy um, there's a little bit under here uh, that you can see so we've stored the um, what do you call it the ah what are they called i can't even think what they're called like the ropes but they're not ropes but the things that you would use to attach it to the bed um we have just stuck in here for now i'm just going to chuck it on there but we have stuck in there for now but yeah all in all it's really really handy so you oh you would unclip it here you would then unzip it if i can find the zip on both sides and then it comes down so unhook it there as well and this comes down i really can't do this one-handed so i'm gonna stop but it was really really easy to put together hopefully the lighting's okay i'm really sorry if it's gone really dark um but like i say i've already unclipped this and i've already unzipped this one uh i've not done it the whole way down there we go so then again you do the same this side pull the zip all the way down you fold that back and then there's like little latches underneath either of these which you just pull up and there you go but then you have that and that aligns perfectly with our mattress but we really like it we're really really happy with it the only thing that this doesn't do that the tutti bambini one that we looked at did i can't remember what it's called i think it's called cozy like just c-o-z-i i think um 
but I'll link this and I'll link the other one we were looking at in the description box. Um, but the Tutti Bambini one, you could, where you kind of can adjust the size of this one, um, you can only do it on one side, whereas the Tutti Bambini, you could, um, sorry, the other way around. With this one, you can only do it to the same height on both sides, whereas the Tutti Bambini one, you could do so that it tilts. And a lot of people were saying that if you have a baby that has reflux or anything like that, or doesn't like to be flat on their back, it was a really, um, really, really useful thing to have. Um, but for us, on the basis that, like I say, we were getting this second hand, it was saving us so much money. Um, it was something that was something that we thought, okay, we can compromise on that. Um, but really, that was the only thing that, like, the only difference. Um, obviously, it doesn't like rock or anything like that. I mean, you can quite literally move it side to side, but there's nothing um, inbuilt so that it swings or rocks or anything like that. And I know that some people do like the ones where you can quite literally swing them um but it works really well and i think it's great in the sense that if we need to go anywhere over the first few months overnight it collapses really easy so it works really really well as a travel cot um it literally did come in a bag completely flat this all comes apart lays flat um and it was great and it, it was literally just a case of kind of pulling it all out and assembling it and i think it took me maybe 15 minutes to put up um so yeah, I definitely, definitely, so far, recommend. Um, hopefully baby loves it. We've, like I say, it is just a case of, at the moment, collecting dust. Um, we've still got, um, obviously, well, six weeks left, give or take. Uh, so it will be a case of, like, keeping it clean and all the rest of it. I wanted to put the sheets on just to see what it looked like. I'll probably take those off to keep them clean, but I'll wash them before baby comes anyway. Um, I have already washed them once, but I will probably wash everything again because I'm just that type of person. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. So I will link it in the description box and I will also uh, link the Tutti Bambini one that we were looking at. Um, but they were really similar price, really comparable, really, really similar style. And like I say, I love the charcoal and the brown and I love this wood effect as well. It kind of, like I say, just really suits our bedroom. Um, our bedroom is, I'll just kind of flip it round. Our bedroom, while a total mess, is very much this um, black, brown and beige vibe. So it just kind of fit well i think with my very wrong clock that has been telling me that it is half four for the last kind of year so um anyway we will move into the nursery now and i will show you the hospital bag um and what i've packed so far uh you're going to be tremendously disappointed because i've done absolutely nothing really um but i'll go through the list with you and just kind of tell you what bits i've got on there um but yeah all in all i'm very happy with the next to me i am probably at this point getting far too big to sit on the floor um in fact i'm going to put this here because i feel like i'm going to be flashing all my decency to you the whole way through this i have started packing my hospital bag and the baby's hospital bag um so i'll go through these with you so the bag um i was actually sent by a really really lovely lady on instagram i will link her business below um as i just think she's great but I have um, started doing it, so it's just like a light, a beige large tote bag, it's like the shape of a gym bag, it will kind of <laughs> turn into a, like a big sausage. So I have literally put nothing in it so far, so the only things that I have packed, um, I have bought, first of all, some Lillette uh, maxi pads, these are the maternity ones, I have bought five packs of these, so they're packs of ten, um, so I've got fifty. I did a bit of a question thing on Instagram and asked people um, whether or not like actual maternity pads were in need or whether or not normal sanitary pads would be fine. Lots of people said to get the maternity ones. The Lalettes were by far the most recommended ones. Um, so they're the ones I've gone with. I bought, most people said they used about five a day and after about a week or it was like between, I think it was four and seven days that they were able to move on to normal sanitary pads. Um, so I just decided, you know what, I'll get them. They were on offer in Sainsbury's. Um, I think they were on offer for about £1.70 a pack. So I got five packs um, just to make sure I had enough. I'd rather have too many big ones than not enough big ones. And I know that Amazon Prime exists i know that supermarkets are like 24 hours most of the time now um but with things like pads i didn't want i just didn't want the stress of sending marco out and all the rest of it so i just thought if i got too many i got too many so i got five packs so i've got 50 of these all together i'm going to take one pack into hospital um but the others are in a really really accessible place so if i do need any more and i am in hospital for more than a couple of days um i can just say to marco they're here 
grab another pack. Um, so I got these. And then also, a lot of people were saying about like the adult nappy, like maternity briefs that you can get. Um, a lot of people were saying they're not really worth it because they're not great at kind of, you need to be aware of how much blood you're losing and they're not the most... Uh, they're not the easiest to tell, so a lot of people said get pads over the briefs. Um, but I did get literally just some Tesco own large ones, um, and I just thought I've got them there then, um, and I might just kind of put them over the top just to just for that extra use perhaps at night. Um, but I don't know, I just thought I've only got two packs of these, so I've only got ten, but they were cheap as chips, and I just thought, oh, do you know what? Oh, I thought there was a use-by date on them then. I was really confused. Um, but yeah, do you know what? I just thought sod it. They were cheap as anything. I'll get them. Um, so I've just packed one pack of them. So it's just a pack of five. The other things that I've packed so far, this really is the most pathetic hospital bag show and tell ever. Um, a lip balm. I packed a lip balm because loads of you said I would need it. So I've packed my pot of lip balm. Um, which I probably won't use, I'll be honest. I'm really terrible at things like that. I will let my lips get really dry and chapped. So props won't use them. Um, I have then packed... How many pairs? So far I have packed two pairs of socks. <laughs> I've packed some thick socks. I've packed some trainer socks. And I thought they will do. Um might pack more who knows I'll see how much room I've got in the bag but two packs of socks um I have then packed a maternity bra so I bought this one from Boohoo it is a large it's a very very large one um it is slightly too big now it fits around the back but the cups are a little bit too big um they are the size of my head but my boobs do seem to have grown massively I've got up two cup sizes in pregnancy in the first trimester I went up two pre uh, two cup sizes I got my boobs measured when I was 13 weeks pregnant and I was a G <laughs> how how am I a G they don't even look like a G but apparently I'm a G um I don't believe it I think I'm gonna get them measured again but the G bras did fit so we will see so anyway I've got this one it's a large um it's a nursing bra all the rest of it and I just thought I will pack that one and I will pack a couple of my other ones as well um loads of people said when your milk come in milk comes in your boobs like go and become really really big so I will you know I just thought a bit of a roomier bra was a good thing to pack um so I've packed a bra so far I have also packed a 90 um it is just a plain black button-up nighty i'll link it down below it's from boohoo i'm gonna get more um but i just figured loads of you said about a night dress i know a lot of people have messaged me and said that they preferred uh, pajamas but a lot of people messaged and said that they wished they'd packed a night dress because they ended up having a c-section which wasn't planned um and the pajamas were really uncomfortable on the incision so for me i just thought i'd play it safe i'd get a night dress um and i'm gonna get a couple more but this is just a plain back black button-up one who have some really good just cheap maternity ones that you're not going to be too fussed about bleeding all over um so i just thought sod it so i have packed a 90 and then i have also packed <laughs> my spritz for bits and my massage stick so i got two bottles of um spritz for bits i didn't buy them i got sent one um again by a client of marco's she got me um, she got me some and said that it was a lifesaver for her so she bought me some um, and then I was gifted some with the massage stick and the perennial oil, uh, perennial oil perennial oil is that what it's called the perennium oil the massage oil uh, for doing your perennium massage um, by my expert midwife so this isn't sponsored in any way shape or form but I just like to let you know when there's a gifted product in there um, lots of people said they maybe didn't use it but like I said in um, I can't remember which video it was I can't remember where I said it but actually if you've got hemorrhoids this is bloody brilliant um so I packed it anyway and a lot of people also said that for your um if you had a c-section for the incision it was actually really nice on that so I just thought I'd pack it anyway and then the massage stick um just I really like the smell of it it smells like um essential oils but not too I'm not really a lover of the smell of essential oils I think they're quite strong um and I'm just not really a fan it wouldn't be my number one scent but I really like the smell of this and I think when we've been doing our hypnobirthing they've been talking about like different types of massage that Marco can do and I thought do you know what it might just be a really good way to relax me it doesn't take up much room so I thought I'd pack that too and that boys and girls is my hospital bag so far um I'll show you the babies 
but like I say in terms of mine that is all I've done I'm starting to get to the point now where I'm like okay I really think I need to get this done there's a few bits I need to buy like a handheld fan a few more nighties um, I'm gonna get some more full briefs I do have a lot of big knickers if you saw my pregnancy essentials videos you know that I am a big advocate for big grandma pants um, but yeah but I'm gonna get some more uh, that I don't really care if they get covered in blood and things like that and can just go in the bin um, Primark do a really good like set of five uh, that are really really cheap so um, yeah there's still a few bits and bobs that I need to buy but so far that's my hospital bag so let's hope that I don't go into labour anytime soon because that is a really unprepared mum to be. For the baby's bag I am using what will be one of my changing bags so I've got two changing bags um, I've got one that's like an almond coloured like rucksack and then I have this one which is a little bit posher um, and it's the stalk stack London one so these are a bit more expensive um, again it's second hand it's not new um, there's loads that we've got second hand honestly it has made um, this preparation so much cheaper I really do recommend it I think um, yeah it's just it's saved us loads um, so yeah so the this is a much bigger bag and is one that I would use less often so it's like it's not the type of bag that I would use just for going out for dog walks and things like that where I have things shoved on my back it would be you know if we were going somewhere a bit nicer and I looked nice not if I was going in joggers and a jumper kind of thing um so I then I've left some of the compartments in there because like I say I've packed none of it um so I will actually show you this bag at some point did a pair of socks yeah so for the baby I have packed a comforter don't know why I just thought this is cute it'll be the first comforter I give it it's a sheep it's very cute. I think it's from Primark. Our friend bought us it. Yeah, it's Primark. It's cute. The baby can have that when it comes out. Um, I have then packed three teeny tiny little pairs of socks. So one, two, three. Three little pairs of socks. And it makes me cry to think that there are feet in this world that fit into these teeny tiny little socks. Um, what else have I packed? I packed some pampers. I will not be using Pampers, I'm just going to put it out there, I will not be using Pampers long term, it sickens me how expensive Pampers are in comparison to other brands. We have stocked up in terms of nappies and wipes with numerous different brands because we thought well we'll try a few and then whichever baby uses we'll really stock up on. Um, and if baby doesn't like a brand we can give them to charity, whatever. Pampers, the cost makes me cry it is awful i remember going into sainsbury's and we were like oh let's have a look at how much nappies are um and when we saw how much pampers were we were like what on earth when you then compare them to the aldi ones which people seem to really rave about i, I just i can't understand it but we did buy some um right at the beginning and we also got bought quite a lot from a friend who kind of stocked up on like nappies and things for us um so we're gonna use them so we have uh, just a pack of 50 here, a pack of 50 baby wipes. Some people told me not to take baby wipes to the hospital and they said just take cotton wool. Um, but I will take both and that's what I'm going to do. And I don't think, you know, some people were like, oh, the midwives are really judgy. If you use baby wipes instead of cotton wool, um, you know, I mean, after that first poo, they can judge away because when I get home, it will be baby wipes that are being used. Um, so yeah, so I just thought I'd take some and then I've got some if I need them. Um, and then finally, <laughs> the only other thing in baby's, uh, baby's bag is baby's nappies. Um, and these are the um, Aldi ones. These are newborn. They are number one. I was going to take another size with me, but these cover from £4 to £11. I think it's very, very unlikely that I'm going to have a baby that's less than £4 and that I'm going to have a baby over £11. So um, I will take these and if we need the bigger size, then, you know, Marco can come and get them. That is not a problem. And that is all I've packed for the baby too. I haven't decided on their coming home outfit yet, but I've not ironed it yet. Um, not that it needs ironing, but it is going to be ironed. My baby is coming home in ironed clothes. Um, it will be the one and only time that it wears ironed clothes in its life. So I may as well, may as well make the most of it. Um, but that's all I've packed so far. So I'm doing really well. I'm really prepared. I feel like throughout the second trimester I was really prepared. And then I hit the third trimester and I'm like, nope. I'm not doing anything now because that means it's real and it's not quite sunk in. So that's that. But there you go, so I've shown you the next to me, I've shown you my hospital bag so far. Um, I have got a list of all the things that 
um, need to be on that list. Uh, so with me, for example, it is things like, uh, I won't read all of them to you, but like a printed out version of my birth plan, or birth preferences, a dressing gown. Some of you have said absolutely don't because it's like a sauna in there. Some of you have said definitely take a lightweight one. Um, slippers, flip flops for the shower. Um, oh, I've not ticked off my lip balm. Um, my own pillow, eye mask, earplugs, um, hairbrush, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, face wash, body wash, shampoo, conditioner. I'm just going to put in like those little tiny, like little travel bottles. I have <laughs> ginormous bottles of shampoo as Marco just gets me like the back washes that he uses in the salon. Uh, there's no way I'm taking those into hospital, so I need to get some of those. Uh, hair bobbles, a plastic bag for dirty clothes, extra long charger lots of snacks and drinks, a water bottle with a straw, um, and a handheld fan. And they tend to be the things, other than the things that I've already packed and showed you, um, that people are saying that I need. So if there's anything on that list that you think I need, sorry, I'll say that again. If there's anything that's not on that list that you think I need, please do let me know in the comments. I don't want to be one of these people that turn up to hospital with a suitcase. Um, I definitely want to pack light. Uh, Anything else can just sit in the car and Marco can just bring out. And like I say, I, the chances are Marco is going to be able to come home. Well, he will come home before I go home because he will get Bruce and bring Bruce home. Um, but he can bring things back to me if I really need it. Um, and then there's a few different bits for him. Just like a, for Marco, I've just put clean underwear, phone charger, his own snacks, um, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste and a pillow. If he needs a change of clothes, he can come home and get them. I don't, I'm not anticipating on him being there for long enough, really, to warrant a whole change of clothes. Um, and then for the baby, we've put baby grows, um, a mixture of sizes, just in case. Socks, blankets, wipes, nappies, cotton wool, muslins, going home outfit, and their car seat. And I can't see what else I would need there either. So, like I say, if there's anything that we've missed... Um, do let us know. I will do a proper video once I've done my hospital bag of a what's in my hospital bag. Um, but for me, I think, I don't see what else I'd need. But then I've not, you know, I haven't birthed before. I don't know what I'm going to need. Uh, so do let me know. But on that note, I'm going to tie this video up here. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't already, do make sure that you subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at amber.itso. And I will see you on Wednesday for another video. Ciao adios, amigos.